on behalf of the Interim Alumni Executive Committee, welcome to the 69th Homecoming Alumni Recognition Service. Since the last time we met in this fashion, we have celebrated birthdays, a graduation or we're graduating, a career promotion or a wedding anniversary. Although the pandemic has been chaotic, we've been able to purchase a house or renovating the existing home that we have. We've also adopted or fostered in addition to our families. Mm, could have been a baby or a fur baby. We also took the opportunity through Zoom to check in with our classmates, laughing, catching up, checking in. There were also sad moments of remembering loved ones that passed away, our parent or parents, a classmate or a friend. But we're thankful to God for his continued providence, safeguarding and sustaining our Crawford family of schools. With your monthly donations and pledges, annual scholarships and resources, our students, future alumni, and many departments have been able to benefit. Later this year, we will be introducing a new alumni association. We look forward to your nominations for president, vice president, public relations officer, membership coordinator, and secretary. In conjunction with the academic theme, with the scriptural reference of Isaiah 43, 19, the takeaway is a new thing. Our God is a God of new beginnings, new seasons, new opportunities. Let us not get weary in doing good because our God will do a new thing. Welcome. Good afternoon, CAA and TJA alumni. Please bow your heads for the prayer of consecration. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful and thankful that we can come together as a community of alumni of Toronto Junior Academy and Crawford Events Academy to celebrate our 69th alumni recognition service. Today we want to reflect on your words spoken to us by the prophet Isaiah. For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. God, the past miracles that you have done for us during pre-COVID years are nothing compared to what you want to do for us, your people, as we begin to emerge from this global disaster. We ask that you consecrate us today and that you reinvigorate our spiritual lives. You long to have us spend the time with you that would nourish us and keep us fit spiritually. So we come to you expecting individual miracles and collective strength to do the work that you've asked us to do as alumni of CAA and TJA. Whatever new thing you have for us, God, we need it and we expect it. Continue to surprise us with your goodness and favor. We commit our lives into your hands and we affirm together the promise found in Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for our good and not for disaster to give us a future and a hope. Today, as we come to your prayer, we ask you to listen and grant each and every one a renewed vision of our collective responsibility to our alma mater. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the name of Jesus. I know I'm not the only one happy to be here today. I know I'm not the only one happy to be here today. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus because he's worthy, because he's wonderful, because he's marvelous. He's everything we ever need. He's everything we ever want. And we exalt him and we glorify him. Why? Because he loves us. Why? Because he first loved us and we love him right back. You don't have 10,000 tongues, but I know you got one. I know you know how to use it. So let's lift up Jesus today with everything that you have. Come on, let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. Glory, glory, hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. You alone are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody amazed by his love? Anybody amazed by his grace? Anybody happy that he loves us? We lift up Jesus and we magnify him. You alone are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. You know this song. It says, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. 
and wonder how he could love of me, a sinner condemned unclean. Come on, let's sing it together. I stand amazed, I stand amazed in the presence, in the presence of, Jesus the of Jesus the Nazarene. And I wonder, I wonder, and wonder how, how he could love he me. Could love a sinner, a sinner condemned unclean. Come on, let's sing it again. I stand amazed. I stand your praises. Come on, lift it up. Will ever be how marvelous say is my say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, let's go. Let's go. How marvelous say to you. 
children and your children and your children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children and your children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children your children, may his favor be upon you, and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, may his children, and your children, may his presence go before you, and behind you, and beside you, all around you, and within you, he is with you, he is with you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, He is for you, He is for you.
Christ my Savior, face to face, what will it be? Hi, everyone. My name is Pastor John Scott. I'm the Youth Director for Ontario Conference, and it's my privilege to offer the charge slash sermonette as we celebrate this year's anniversary of Crawford Adventist Academy. Join me in prayer as we begin. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for this wonderful privilege to worship together in this recognition service. We thank you for all those who are watching on and participating. We pray, God, that we will enjoy and have an experience that we will never forget. Thank you, O God, for all the classes that have gone before as we celebrate them, including mine, the class of 1992. I pray, God, that your, your spirit will be poured out upon all of us as we worship you today. In Jesus' name, amen. 
My message is entitled, You Are an Eagle. It is my privilege to share with you some thoughts coming from Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 is broken down generally into three sections for the student of the word to understand. And from beginning to end, you get to see the context of why God does what he does in the lives of God's people for their good, but ultimately for his glory. The first thing that we discover in this particular chapter, chapter 40 of Isaiah, is the condition of the people. Chapter 40 covers the story of God's people in Babylonian captivity. There's no doubt God's people are in a tough place because captivity is no joke. This, of course, is a storm they're actually going through. In those days when one is in captivity, there's no control over your life, no control over your things, no control over your personhood, no control over your destiny. You have no control over what you will eat, where you will go, whom you'll interact with, how your life will live. In captivity, you are under con constant surveillance. Guards watch over you on a daily basis, and you're jailed if you tried in any way to escape. In this context, the people of God lost their own heritage, living in unfamiliar places. The people of God lost their identity, having been forced to mingle with the enemy. The people of God lost their culture because they had to take on a new life, a new way of doing things, even a new language. Even the money they worked hard for was not theirs, and the modes of transportation were simply unfamiliar. I could understand why God's people dared to put in writing a song of their displeasure when they said, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it, for there those who carried us away captive asked of us a song, and those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, sing, sing us one of the songs of Zion. I completely agree with the people of God when they asked in verse 4, how shall we sing? This is our Psalm 137. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Can I ask you a question? What song are you singing when you're going through your storm? What song can you sing when the world you're living in has been turned upside down? What song can you sing when the stuff you're going through just doesn't make sense at all? What song can you sing when your life is messed up and broken and bruised and defeated? What song have you been singing through this pandemic? And what song have you been singing? Those of you who graduated from Crawford Adventist Academy and you don't feel like you have accomplished all that you've desired to accomplish since you graduated on that wonderful day. To be honest, inspiring lyrics written by the great songwriters out there do not come to mind when you're going through your storm. You're not thinking about the last gospel tune when your marriage is on the rocks. You're not thinking about your favorite praise and worship tune when you, you've just failed your chemistry exam or you didn't get into the university of your dreams or you, you got cut from the basketball team or your, your, your boyfriend just broke up with you or, or your parents decided after 25 years separation was their best, best out. You're not thinking about the last gospel tune when you're going through your storm, whatever that storm is. And that's exactly what the people of God are going through in this circumstance there in Isaiah chapter 40. They've had a front row seat to their captivity. They've seen their brothers and their sisters die at the hands of their enemies. They've experienced unreasonable work requirements. The struggle they face in this strange land is unbearable. They're tired of the emotional turmoil and physical pain that they've endured. And so the people of God are forced to ask themselves a question, has God left me like this? And that's in essence what's being referenced in verse 27, where it says, why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, may my way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. This they speak because they've been in this hellhole, as it were, for more time than they care to mention. People of God, I, I know that you've been at this place where the storm is just not passing over. You've been at that place where 
You think this too shall pass, but it hasn't. You've been at that place where others have been there with you, but their storm is gone, but you've gone through a PhD in storm management. You too will be tempted to ask the question, has God given up on me as well? Has God forgotten about me? That was the condition that the people of God were facing. But second of all, in this wonderful chapter is the cause as to why the people were in this condition. The condition of the people of God was not without cause. They being held in Babylonian captivity was not without within a vacuum. They should have known that this was likely to happen. You see, their captivity was as a result of their stupidity, their disobedience. They should have remembered God's warning to them again and again that this would happen if they continued down a path to destruction. The truth be told, if Patricia Jorgonoff on CP24 tells you it's going to rain, then the result li might likely be rain at some point in your day. If your mom tells you that that boy you, you've been hanging out with is bad news, that she's seen his type before, her assessment might be right. And if the doctor tells you to get on that treadmill because your heart won't be able to handle it, there might be some truth to that. Because as you've heard it before, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Nobody likes to, be to, nobody likes to tell a loved one, I told you so. Yet the people of God invited this consequence on themselves when they chose not to heed the word of God over and over and over again. And you know how consequences work. If you've done well, quite often you get rewarded with benefits. But the opposite is also true. If given the opportunity to choose not to do well, there are consequences for your actions. In Judah's case, the consequence is captivity. But sometimes in our case, it's a boatload of crazy. We sometimes experience a whirlwind of trouble because if we sow the wind, will likely reap the, whirl the whirlwind. You determined to take seriously this, your undergrad studies degree, because you know that it's going to set you up for bigger things in your future, but yet you spent most of your time on the basketball court. You're going to be in trouble with your future. You said you would get your health in check, but at the last Christmas party, you spent all your time being a professional foodie. You're going to be in trouble with your health. You purpose to set yourself up financially your, for your future. Yet you sign up for all the credit cards you could find. You comfort by all the Louis Vuitton purses you could find. Exactly how do you think your financial future is going to be? And what it will look like with such negative incidences on your credit report? Brothers and sisters, all the classes that have graduated that we're celebrating today you got to keep your word because your word, as the young folks say, is your bond. Sean Colby once says, and I quote, we are free to choose our paths, but we can't choose the consequences that come with them. End of quote. Judah is in captivity because the people of God didn't keep their word with him. They broke every single promise they made to God. They said that they will follow him to the ends of the earth. They said that they will go wherever he wants them to go. They said they will do whatever he wants them to do. They had a relationship with God. They have been in a contractual relationship with God from the jump. But again and again, God's people broke every one of their clauses in their contract with him. And this is the condition and also the cause for their condition. But thirdly, in this beautiful book, I want to share with you is this, that God always has a cure for the condition that we all his people might be in. So what do you do when you're caught in the storms of your own life, sometimes by your own making? In this passage, God is simply saying you found yourself in captivity because of your own choices. Your kingdom is in ruins. Your towns are torn and tattered. Your kings and leaders have either been killed or made servants. Your families are broken apart. Your children are ravaged and disjointed. Your self-worth has been compromised. Your spiritual focus has, been, has deteriorated. 
God is also saying to his people and to us today, all those who celebrate Crawford of Venice Academy, for whatever reason you feel down and forgotten and forsaken, God's people are stronger than this. That's because your past is not determinative of your present circumstance. And your present circumstance has no bearing on your destiny, the destiny that God has for you. In essence, God is saying in verse 8 in Romans, he says, you might be hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Why? Because you're always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in your body. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. The problem is we want to have mountaintop experiences without going through some valleys first. We want testimonies before we have transformative tests. We want to have our crown without going through some crosses, always putting the cart before the horse. But God is looking for people who understand that in order for, for us to go up, we must first be willing to be brought low. God understands that our ability to get up is powered by our experiences, the experiences that we have when we're down. God wants you to ride on the high places of the earth, but in order for you to be able to do that, you have to go down. And sometimes those going down has to do with all the struggle and the challenges and the storms that you're experiencing, whether it is because of your own actions or because life just happened, the process of life. He says, you think I've forgotten you? You think I've abandoned you? He says, think again. This is how I see you. I see you, Crawford of Venice Academy, and all those who have graduated, and all those who are studying, all of our teachers, all of our board members, everyone who's looking on and who's passionate about Crawford of Venice Academy, all of us today can find this relevant. He sees all of us as eagles. And the three things that I want to share with you about eagles before I conclude as part of my charge is this, that number one, eagles are fearless. God has not given us a spirit of fear. You see, eagles never give up and they are relentlessly focused on, on achieving their goal. They will never surrender to, to overwhelming size or, or weight of their prey. They're fearless in their hunting strategies and, and some even prey on goats. And the lesson in this life is that in life, we must learn to be fearless in the pursuit of our success as we face the challenges on our way, squarely knowing that the only option is victory. Success will come only when we face the future head on with an indomitable spirit. You see, someone once says that fear is the dark room where the enemy develops our negatives. But I continue that sentence by simply saying that faith is the place where God develops our character. God wants us like eagles to develop fearlessness through faith. That despite whatever we're experiencing, those things that we're experiencing in the doldrums down there cannot overwhelm us as we go forth from this day living in this new reality. He says, I want you to be fearless because you're an eagle. But number two, eagles take time to re-energize. And that's why he says to the people of Israel, you're going to mount up with wings as eagles. Despite the awe and grandeur of eagles, their bodies deteriorate when they reach around the age of 30. But to replenish their strength and vigor, they retreat to the mountainside for at least four to, four to five months. During that time, their bodies go through a metamorphosis. When you see, him, see them in, in, in their condition, they, they look broken. They look frail. They're at their worst, most vulnerable state. But it's in that season they experience powerfully and transformatively their own renewal. It is during that time their old feathers fall off. You see, when the demands of life weigh into your schedule and you're almost drained. A retreat is strongly recommended to keep 
in constant contact with relevance. To keep the stream, a retreat is required. It helps to keep you in check and on point. So those of you Crawford family, don't worry about being in the doldrums sometimes because God, through those experiences, he is trying to renew us to mount up with wings as eagles. The third thing that I discover about eagles, where God is really saying to the children of Israel and saying to us today, he's saying, like eagles, that eagles were made to fly high. You see, eagles have an innate ability to soar, to fly high with little to no effort. They rise up on their wings in an unusually high manner. They do this especially when storms come their way. They say they can fly up to an altitude of 10,000 feet and they are able to land quickly just to catch a prey. <laughs> can I encourage you today? You are special unto God. You stand out like an eagle in the crowds of life. You might think you're ordinary, but God has some extraordinary things to do through you for him and for his glory. And sometimes it might come with a price because the storms like the Israelites have gone through and the storms that you might sometimes go through since you left Crawford till this day, those storms and winds may come at you and, and, and they will come faster and some might be slower and some might be bigger than you thought and some might come in multiple periods of your life. But because you are an eagle, I'm inviting you to spread those large wings of yours and fly, fly higher, fly higher and higher to the highest heights with God. To the various class members celebrating your milestone at this year's Crawford of Venice Alumni Weekend, you might feel down and out sometimes. You might feel broken and bruised sometimes. Your situation might look like all is lost sometimes. But can I encourage you, God is not interested in your decline. God is interested in your upward incline. He says, but to those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May Isaiah's message to the people of Judah and to us today be a source of strength and courage as we face our tomorrows. God bless you. Hello, class of 2012. It's been 10 years since you graduated. 10 years since we walked the halls of Crawford and we went wearing our uniform as we went from one class to the other. We've made it. Time sure does fly. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Amara Gill, and I've been the president for three out of the four years of high school. Some of my favorite memories of my class are the trips that we took. We took class trips as well as college days. During those times on the bus, we would make up songs, tease each other, and we just had a good time. Um, Crawford has taught us that we should always strive for excellence. And during these 10 years, I hope that has been what you've been striving for. As the next 10 years come, I hope that you continue to do so. Class of 2012, I would just like to leave you with this message, that the sky is not the limit, it is just a stop along the way. So remember to always strive for excellence, always do your best, and reach for those goals and dreams. Before I say goodbye, I would just like to shout out my house. Hi, gents!
Academy Class of 2002. Congrats on reaching this 20 year milestone. My name is Cerise Hardy, but you may remember me as Cerise Robinson. During our senior year, my role was class secretary. One thing I appreciated about our class was our level of teamwork and camaraderie, which stand out in some of my favorite memories from our time together. One being how well we performed in Crawford's annual class challenge year after year. As ninth graders, we came in second place overall in the class challenge games and then first place every year after that until our graduation in 2002. These were fun times that established relationships to last a lifetime. May God continue. Hi, my name is Melissa Johnson, and I had the honor of being the class president for the wonderful class of 1997. During our time at Crawford, we had some amazing time developing both academically, spiritually, and holistically. We made friendships that have lasted over the 25 years and I cannot believe that it has been that long. One of our class memories was going on our senior class trip where we, were, we went to Philadelphia and Hershey, Pennsylvania and even became part of a test group for a new chocolate bar called the Cookies and Cream Chocolate Bar in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And now it's still on the shelves today. Congratulations class of 1997 on 25 years of making an impact in this world. Hello class of 1992. 30 years. It's a long time but it just feels like yesterday we were roaming the halls of Crawford where we were fortunate enough to receive great education, form the foundations with special friendships and experience many unforgettable memories. I'm often asked where did I go to high school and I'm always proud to say that I went to Seventh-day Adventist High School straight from, grade, from kindergarten to grade 12 and I loved every minute of it. Our class, the class of 92, was a very special group. We were creative, we, when it came to class challenges, we always strived to be different and we stuck together and always supported each other whenever it was needed. I'm so grateful that I was part of this class and a part of this school. I will forever cherish all the memories made. I'm lucky to have grown up in an environment where God was always put first. Congratulations to all those who are honored this year. Let's all continue to reach for the stars. Hey, class of 87, it's Rowena here. Um, Judy asked me to put together a little video message welcoming you. Sorry that we can't be together in person, um, but uh, she wanted me to share um, a, a favorite memory of um, our time together. And I just um, remember how fun class trip was going out to CUC. I remember thinking, I'd never seen anything so beautiful when we saw um, the Rocky Mountains for the first time. And um, I just, uh, it, was, it was a great, fun bonding experience. I remember singing Sound of Music with you all on the green hills on the campus and all the guys doing their GQ photos. I still have those to look back on too. Um, so I really wish um, you all well. I think um, that you are a great group and great class to go through high school with. And um, just also taking some time to think about the class members that we've lost, remembering some of our favorite memories about them. And I'm wishing you and your family and friends um, uh, a good day, a good weekend, and cherish these times that you have together. And um, take care. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Good morning. My name is Michael Butterfield, and I've been asked to acknowledge and to welcome the alumni from the 1982 graduating class. Every alumnus believes his or her class was unique or special in some way, but that's based on their subjective opinion. I, on the other hand, and with objective fact, can confidently assert that our class really was unique. I say that because the 13 of us were the school's first graduates. In fact, we went to school so long ago that we were the last graduating class not to have to wear uniforms throughout the school year. On behalf of my classmates, I would like to say to today's graduates and to their respective families, congratulations. 
You've done so much hard work to get to this point. But we'd also like to encourage you to embrace the future. The Lord has such great plans for each one of you, greater than your wildest dreams, provided you allow him to continue to lead you. So with that, we want to wish you a great graduation and a wonderful day. Welcome to the virtual TGA reunion, and a very special shout out to our small but mighty class of 72. I'm Asha Denson. My maiden name was Sen. Many of you may remember my mother, Mercy Sen, who taught grade two at TGA for a few decades. I remember we had some very long school days, but since then the years have seemed very short. It is hard to believe that 50 years have passed, but I think we've all been blessed to have written several chapters in the book called Life. When I came to TGA as a shy sixth grader, I was not only new to Toronto, but to Canada as well. My teachers, hopefully I, I remember them all, but the Careys, the Jameses, Mrs. Williams, Mr. Rusk, along with my fellow students, helped me establish myself as a new Canadian. I often got into trouble at school, believe it or not, and as a punishment, I had to clean the snake aquarium, wash test tubes, amongst other things. Thanks, Mr. Carey. But with the passage of time, even that has become a fond memory. I wish everyone peace, happiness, and a life full of memories like our years at TGA. I remember the excitement many of us shared when the final decision and approval came through that my classmates and I would be able to stay at TJA for grade 11. Later on the next school year, many of us were thrilled that once again, the approval was announced we would be a full four-year high school and have grade 12 at the newly renamed Crawford Adventist Academy. As a teenager, you dread the thought of going to a new school and to be separated from your friends. So those two years, everyone, including the students, worked especially hard to gain support for this growth. During these two years, the late Dr. Eugene Rao was the principal during this crucial transition. I remember his enthusiasm and dedication to guide us students to prepare and present Sabbath programs to many of the Toronto area churches. Principal Rao was a big man. That's what I remember about him. He was tall and he had legs that went from here to there. And as he strode down the hallways, he would uh, be in and out of our vision in no time flat. He also had a big heart. He would not uh, pass an opportunity to speak to students. And uh, being a tall man, when he spoke to elementary schools, it was kind of interesting as you'd see him bend over and he'd go down and he'd reach uh, the level of the student and he'd talk to them there. He even squat down sometimes. I was a new student in a new school, in a new country, entering high school in grade nine. Dr. Rao was not only our school principal, but he was also our math teacher. His stature may be intimidating, but he was a very approachable man. He always had a big smile as he roamed around the halls of Crawford Adventist Academy. As a teacher, he was very patient, to me in particular, as I was still getting adjusted to education and life in general in Canada. He also had a big heart, uh, and he gave uh, of himself to the students, to the staff that were there. He was often the first person in the school. Uh, he would welcome students who came in early and he'd be the one that would say goodbye to them at the end of the day. Uh, one thing I remember about him was that he, he served um, in many capacities. He was the principal, for sure, but he also um, uh, was there as a counselor to students that wanted to talk to someone. He was there for teachers who needed uh, some support. He was encouraging and dedicated to this growth to promote a full high school experience to the youth and the community. He was understanding and funny. He made learning enjoyable. 
entertaining. In fact, he contributed largely to my love of mathematics, which played a part in my decision to study math in university. Dr. Rao not only worked at his job, but he truly loved his students. Oh, and those cookies that Mrs. Rao baked every Friday for Dr. Rao's grade 9 math students were so good. Unforgettable. I was saddened when he left CAA after that year. I hope that our paths will cross again. Sadly, that was not to be on this earth. I'm definitely looking forward to sharing stories with him on that great resurrection morning. I pray that our God of peace bring comfort to the grieving family. Good afternoon, fellow Crawford alumni. It's hard to believe that it's already been a year since we last met in this virtual space. As we emerge from the global pandemic that has made a direct impact not only on our schools, but also on all of you as well, I can confidently share that God is indeed still working and many of our biggest blessings come in the form of our alumni. In 2021, our scholarship donors once again honored their funding to award 16 deserving recipients from the class of 2021. I am excited to share that following our 2021 giving appeal, Pamela George from the class of 1988 called to share her desire to launch the inaugural Pamela George Excellence in Health Sciences Award to help propel our youngest alumni as they embarked on their post-secondary journey. Eight of our 24 graduation scholarships offered are alumni driven. Our Worthy Student Funds Annual Funds and Alumni Driven Worthy Student Funds continue to provide critical tuition assistance to students and their families experiencing financial challenges. In December of 2021, we received a $30,000 bequest towards our Worthy Student Fund from a late community member who passed by our campus often and wanted to ensure that students could be helped. We are grateful for our regular and monthly donors who made it possible to help 19 families to date, totaling just over $33,000. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Our 12th annual Vernon Langdon Golf Classic returns on August 3rd, 2021, with a fresh rebrand and new faces on the planning committee. The event was met with great enthusiasm from golfers, alumni, and corporate sponsors for a great day on the green raising over $14,200 in support of youth development initiatives at the Crawford Family of Schools. We hope to see you at our 13th annual Vernon Langdon Golf Classic on Friday, July 22nd, 2022 with an 8 a.m. shotgun start with a return for the beautiful Richmond Hill Golf Club. We encourage all alumni to continue supporting Crawford. Keep in touch with the alumni office and with each other. Engage on our social media. Consider becoming a monthly donor. Launch a scholarship. Name Crawford Adventist Academy in your estate plans. Volunteer your time. And most importantly, continue to lift up this ministry in your fervent prayers. God is doing a new thing here at your alma mater. And it is our prayer that you, our dear honored classes, as well as all of our alumni, Past administrators, faculty, and friends will continue to love and support our old school for many generations to come. God bless you.
Sisters Margaret and Michelle launched the Maisie A. Nelson Worthy Student Fund in 2021 in honor of their late mother, who made Adventist education at Crawford Adventist Academy a priority for her daughters. The funds will be awarded to grade 8 graduating students who wish to continue their studies in our high school division. Mrs. Nelson was passionate about Adventist education. As a single mother who was able to put her two daughters through Adventist education, she encouraged other mothers to trust the Lord. The idea of launching a worthy student fund is precious to the sisters as their mother could not afford to put them at CAA together, sending Margaret first and then Michelle. She worked so hard, often taking extra shifts in order to pay tuition. As a result of her example, she has seen many parents choose Adventist education for their children. We are inspired by the generosity and the vision of two alumni sisters as they share the great legacy of their late mother, Maisie A. Nelson, extending opportunities for future generations of young people to experience excellence in Christian education at Crawford Adventist Academy. In recognition of their commitment to excellence, dedication, love, and support of Crawford Adventist Academy, we present to you the 2022 Alumni of the Year, Miss Margaret Monfoss, Class of 1990, and Miss Michelle Anderson, Class of 1993. Hello, everyone. It is a great honor for us to be nominated for Alumni of the Year 2022. As graduates of the classes of 1990 and 1993, Michelle and I are privileged to be able to select Crawford Adventist Academy as the recipients for the Maisie A. Nelson Scholarship. Our late mother was a firm supporter of Christian education and lived out her convictions by ensuring that we were both able to attend Crawford, no matter the sacrifice. As a single mother, these extra expenses often meant working extra shifts and cutting expenses, but to her, the sacrifice was non-negotiable. Even after we graduated from Crawford, our mother continued to encourage other mothers to support Christian education even when it seemed impossible due to their financial circumstances. In these cases, she would often financially sponsor children whose parents couldn't quite afford the total tuition. Her life and legacy embodies the attributes of sacrifice and working hard for what you believe in. We hope that through this scholarship, her legacy continues to encourage and inspire young people to value hard work and Christian education. We would like to encourage our fellow alumni and friends of Crawford to consider joining us in supporting our young people in Christian education. Please consider a financial gift to keep programs like this going. Thank you. Class of 1997, happy 25th anniversary, Crawford Adventist Academy. So many wonderful memories as I think about my beautiful class. Uh, throughout our 25 years, we have gone through so much, so many wonderful changes. But one thing that has remained constant is that name, Jesus. How wonderful he is. How matchless he is. How glorious he is. So as I sing this song to all the classes, I hope that you are blessed.
One version of Isaiah 43, 19 says, I'm going to do something new. It is already happening. Don't you recognize it? Happy Sabbath to my Crawford friends and family. My name is Andon Boyce, and I'm the high school principal here at Crawford. And I want to thank you so much for joining us for a 69th alumni recognition service. And a special shout out to the class of 2012, which I helped co-sponsor. It's true that so much has changed since the last time you were on campus, to a point where just a week ago, we lost about half of our beloved willow tree. But despite all of the changes that may be happening, I want to remind you that God is truly doing something new as we, we speak. He's finding different ways for us to connect together, support each other, and encourage the next generation of students that are going to be committed to excellence as they serve the world for God's kingdom. And all of this is only possible because of the support of our alma, alma mater and your prayers. So thank you and God bless. start moving towards that separated line. Oh, I'm waiting for the mighty waters. Oh, I got a made of mine. And I don't mind if I lose any blood on the ways of salvation. And I'll find the strength that I got until I die. So I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Fall across the river, can you hear freedom calling? Calling me to answer, gonna keep on keeping
Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, truly you are an awesome God. Thank you for the opportunity to gather virtually in order to reflect and reminisce about the many blessings you have bestowed upon us throughout the years. We're thankful for the friendships that we made and for the memories that we will long cherish while we were in Crofton. Thank you for carrying us thus far and for the sacrifices that were made to get us through Christian education. We are thankful for the 20 years that are behind the graduating class of 2002 and look forward to the blessings you have in store for us. Be with us now as we depart from each other and as we look forward to seeing each other again face to face, may your light continue to shine through us until that day when we see each other when we can see each other face to face when you come to take us home all these things i ask in the sweet and precious name of jesus amen